Hello. Hey, Brian. Hey, Timo hey, here. hey. How you going? How you going? What's up? Great, 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 great. Um, cool. um, let's see. I'm getting a lot of feedback for some reason. Uh, hopefully, really? hopefully, everything, hopefully goes everything goes okay. okay. I don't hear any, but... Good, good, good. good. Um, the new album comes out, uh, Avalon, The Land of New Hope, uh, May 21st. Um, are you excited? Um, well, I've, I'm, let's say, I feel happy. I, I feel positive about that. I can't say that I'm excited, actually. Actually, I don't remember when I was excited the last time. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Maybe when I was a kid. Great. Wow. Tell me a little bit about your childhood. Wow, wow, that was that was pretty heavy, actually. My, um, it's a it's kind of a dark story, actually. Um, when I was twelve, my father committed suicide, wow. which I almost which I almost witnessed, and that was, of course, had a profound effect on my future, and that actually made me a musician. And then I, I. Um, Basically, when I grew up, I was just playing guitar since I was 14. And music has always been sort of a thing that has helped me a lot. And my music has helped also other people, I've been told. So, you know. But today I am an older and wiser 47 year old musician, happily releasing. New metal opera. <laughs> right, right. When when Serafino came to you first and, and asked you about it, uh, what were your thoughts? Well, he was like, um, "That's a good idea." I mean, I was like, I was completely there. I was like, "Okay, wow, let's do it." I, I mean, I, I've never did that like anything like that before, so I was really, really, really into it. And he was not only asking me for one. Metal opera. He was asking three, so he's he's asking like a trilogy, and um, so it's going to be three of these, and uh, this this one is uh, the first one, but the story is one complete story, so chunked in three parts, and this is the ending of the story. Now, now is. Uh did he give you a, a, a time span when everything has to be done? Basically, rough time span. I mean, he <laughs> is uh, he is uh, he's kind of um, strict when it comes to schedules and things. And he was an is executive producer in here, in this re on this record. And this is the first time on my career that I'm having one. So I had to okay the demos and the songs and everything through him and that was when I first thought about that I was like oh man that, that, that this is going to be a disaster because I'm not really so much into respecting authorities <laughs> <laughs> is anybody? I don't think so yeah. there are a lot of people I mean for example Finnish people are very much respecting authorities wow you know, so um, I'm not because you know I've traveled a lot. I've been to 62 countries, two and a half thousand shows in 20 years. So wow. I'm more like a world citizen. So, but you know, I respect Serafino, so I I do um, appreciate a feedback from him, but I don't appreciate feedback from people I don't respect or don't know. Right. You know? Uh, how how do you go about picking the vocalist? Does Serafino pick the vocalist, like Russell Allen and uh, Tony Keiko and other people? No, it was me. I was uh, uh, the first thing I did was I wrote the story. So I went to this what I call George Lucas mode. Right. So I wrote an entire story with paper and pen, and I chunked it into three pieces, and then um, I started composing. The songs, and then I was thinking about the vocalists. And uh, the first, the first thing was that I I decided that I want to have a female vocalist as a main character. Right. And that became Ellie's Rude, and and this was from Seraphine. I did not know this lady before, 
So um, I got in touch with her, and, and um, she's a fabulous singer. She can sing anything, and, and very emotional singer. Really kicks ass. Wow. And, and can also be like a very fragile and, and very um, like emotional. So not not only the kick ass, but everything what you what you really need. Right. And I wanted to have Kiska in there. Um, I wanted to have Rob Brock, which I remember from the 80s, from Mo- this project cool. of Mars. Now, now. And, and I was, because I really loved the, yeah, I really loved that record, this project Mars, so I was having this voice of his from that, and I sent him an email, like, didn't know what he was doing, uh, and he responded, like, I'm on board. So I was like, wow, this is going very smoothly. So it was very easy to get the cast of the vocalists. Right. Was there anybody that you wanted that just couldn't fit in? No, I was. it was really, everybody was there. I mean, Russell I've known for 10 years, and he was just sending me the tapes. I do it. It's like, you're, he's always like that. It's like, you know, he's always there when you need him. Very cool. And amazing vocalist, too. Oh, man. I mean, he's on this album, what he did. I don't know what he did. I mean, it was, when I heard it, he was like, he was really going for it. It's like, very, I was very surprised. I mean, of course, he's, he's a world class singer, but I mean, he is so emotional on this. Right. Uh, is there any particular song that stands out, uh, above any others uh, on the disc that, uh, you know, you really worked hard and I know you worked hard on the CD, but I mean, is there any particular song that really was difficult or really, you know, you're really impressed with? Um, well, I am personally impressed about this track, which most people probably would not be impressed about, but this, uh, this I'll Sing You Home, because of the emotional um, charge it has, and you really have to listen to that. And there's like, I spend a lot of time with Elise to record the vocals for this song, and in the end of the, the song, uh, in the end of the last line, what she sings, you can actually hear her sobbing, she's crying. Wow. So we really went deep in there, and I'm really happy about Aval- Avalanche Anthem. That is like um, the opener, is like straight to the face kind of a thing. It's like you don't expect that it it starts like that. It could start like that, you know, from me. Right. So that, that was like... Um, I knew it has to be like right there. It has to be very impressive and like really big. And of course, the the song of Kiss Case is very traditionally structured song and simple song, uh, deliberately so, uh, to give room for his amazing vocals. Now, thinking of the the next CD that comes out, um, uh, will you use different vocalists? Do you think? Yes, everybody everybody will be different. Cool, cool. You have everybody in mind? I have the main character in mind, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. No. no <laughs> I not. didn't think you were going to tell me. Yeah, I, I won't tell you. Man. It's, but it's going to be a, a big surprise. Cool, cool, cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you feel like um, you'll be able to tour in the United States with this? Well, if it's going to be a big hit... Oh, yeah, so I want to know if you're coming. I want to come. I mean, it's been a while. I, last time I was in States was 2006 or seven. Uh-huh. With Stratovars when we did, we, we did a tour of, like, four weeks through the whole States and in a bus, and I was like, that's when I got to see the whole America, actually. And we went through, you know, through the whole country, basically. Right. And it was an amazing trip, you know. Wow. Went to see Niagara wow. Falls and everything, and it's like I was in LA. I was in in a Sunset Strip wearing. A, I, this is a fun story because I bought um, a T-shirt uh, which uh, said John Deere. Uh huh. Right. And it said Country Boy, and I was like, okay, I'm a country boy. 
in a way. And I like this shirt. I bought it from um, Saskatchewan or something. Uh-huh. Cool. <laughs> and then I had that shirt when I was walking on Sunset Strip. And I was thinking, why are people laughing to me? <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody told me, that, you, you, do you know what you're wearing? I mean, do you know what is John Deere? I said, I don't know. Is it, is it some animal or something like that? I was like, no, is it like a tractor? Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> and then I, then I realized, oh, fuck. I'm like, okay, but that's a funny story. And I, I'm oh, there, yeah. and there is like a Batman is walking there, and Donald Duck is walking there, and all these things. And I'm, I'm like, well, what is going on in here? Wow. <laughs> I'm sure John Deere appreciates it. Yeah, I mean, the people were like laughing to me. I was like, what's... What's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> I still have that shirt. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you feel like um, any of the other projects that you work with in the past you, you'll work with again? Like uh, one of my favorite was Re- Revolution Resonant. Reson- 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 yeah. Uh, like that CD was amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I'm all up for anything, you know, musically, which is like – Cool, and that album was basically composed for the Stratovars. Right. Uh, so the the new era, if you mean this album, right, uh, which had Tobias and and Kiske. Uh, those songs I composed for Strato, and then when I left the band, I took the songs with me, and I I did this Re- Revolution Renaissance, which was Seraphina's idea to right. call it Revolution Renaissance. And I'm up for this, but now I have two more rock opera, uh, metal operas to do. So, and then probably I'm gonna do like a solo album, and maybe I I, I form like a solo band, cool. and do, do some touring because I have like 500 songs I can play. So, wow. uh, so, so what what's like a um, a daily life for you now when you get up? What do you do? Yeah. Um, my life in this moment is extremely simple. It's basically um, when I get up, um, I get up very early. I get up at six in the morning, uh-huh. and then um, I make some coffee and I read the papers um, and and um, I stay awake for like an hour and a half. And then I go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Probably because I know that everybody else is going to work. Right. So I'm like, okay, I go back to sleep. Then I go to my studio. I have a studio like five minutes from my home. And I spend a lot of time just writing songs, writing music. And, and um, you know, and then I spend a lot of time in the nature, taking pictures. That's my hobby. Cool. I'm really like a photographic uh, nutter. It's like I really love to take photos. I sometimes get up like at three when the sun rises, right, to catch this this perfect light. But other than that, I don't drink anymore. I stopped drinking six, seven years ago. I don't go to clubs, you know. Uh huh. I, I no partying. So very, very, very uh, calm life. Right. Right. So when someone recognizes you on the street and asks for your autograph, what's that feeling like? Actually, it doesn't really feel like anything anymore. No? It, it, no. I mean, it's um, it's usually those people, when they ask me the autograph, autograph, when they notice that I am a completely normal person, right? they sort of get like uh, maybe even a little bit disappointed. Because I'm I'm not aware of all these projections to me. Because in the end, I am actually a very normal guy. Right. I'm just a musician. I'm blessed with the gift of music. And then when um, somebody comes to me with this, that you're a god or something. Right. I really don't know how to react to that because I don't I don't think like that. And, um, but I do spend time and I talk to people when, whenever they come to me and, you know, give them some time because I feel it's, it is an obligation. 
Do you feel, um, are you happy with your full career? No, I'm nobody's. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are some things that I should not have done. And, uh, musically, I am, I am completely happy. Right. With my career. Cool. I mean, there's nothing I would do otherwise. And this is really how I feel. I, I don't believe in the looking back and saying, I would have done this different. Right. Or I want to re-record an album, which I would never do. Right. You know, well, how, know. how about in the, the, the future? Is there anything that you haven't done uh, that you would like to try? Yes, there are there are a lot of things. I mean, there, there's probably at some point I'm going to try to write a musical. Uh-huh. And uh, at some point... I'm gonna start. I have a production company myself, and um, I'm gonna write. I am writing, in fact, as I told you, music all the time. So I'm writing music that is not only metal. I'm writing music that is like Madonna or Lady Gaga or whatever. Right. You know? I'm a huge music fan. I love music in all its forms, and to me, it doesn't matter if it's Lady Gaga, Shania Twain, or Slayer. Right. If I like it, I like it. If somebody has a problem with, with it morally, morally, then so be it. <laughs> right, right. What, what's some of the music that you listened to recently? Um, I think I listened to you too. Uh huh. You too's all that, all that you can't leave behind. That record, I love that record. And then I listened to. I think I listened to Maiden's Peace of Mind, which I bought from iTunes. I haven't been listening to that since 15 years or something. I was having holidays in, in Thailand, and I bought some stuff from old stuff, like some Dio stuff and some Maiden stuff from iTunes, and I was like, fuck, this still sound great. Right. It's like After 25 years, it's like amazing. Wow. You know, it's all about the songs. It's like... Definitely, definitely. Yeah. What's your feeling about vinyl coming back? I don't think it's coming back. No, think so? No, I don't think so. I think it's very minor. I mean, it's like the quantities are like... I don't. I think it's more like romantic view of saying it, like that vinyl is coming back. I think that um, in the next five years, we're going to see... I mean, we are already in the middle of a huge change of the music industry. But in the next five years, we're going to really see what's going to happen because the majors are holding on to their things, you know, of the past, but they're going to have to let go eventually. And right. do, you, do you feel uh, CDs are on the way out and just downloads are going to be uh, the future? Unfortunately, yes. That kind of sucks. It sucks big time. <laughs> <laughs> sucks big you know, time. What, what can I what can I get autographed a, a burnt copy you know I, people, mp3 yeah yeah God, that's great <laughs> <laughs> it's digital autograph it's, it's like you know I think that some you know that the bands will have more control to their music so of course you can print CDs but I think CDs will become sort of like vinyl has been right so you can manufacture CDs, but the CD plants, I mean, this affects the whole field of music industry, the, the CD plants, the studios, the cover artists, everybody. So everybody has to adjust. And if it's going to be like you buy a streaming service to your mobile phone, and this is the way you listen to the music, what can I do? <laughs> right, definitely. So, how does Frontiers treat their artists? Uh, strict and fairly. Uh -huh. <laughs> Strictly and fairly. I mean, they are, they have very strict quality control. Right. They are, are extremely aware of, of the fact that to be able to offer quality products, they have to have this. And, um, to me, they have been extremely nice, but I am no exception in this 
as far as it comes to the quality control, because, for example, like I said, on this album, I had an executive producer. So I wrote, at the end of the day, I think 16 or 17 songs uh -huh. before Serafina was saying that this is it now. Cool. cool. And I was like, you know, I've, I've been working now on, a, on, a, on a, another Frontiers project called Alan Lande. Cool, I know that. Yeah, I just finished the songwriting and like 10 songs, and for that I wrote 17 songs. Wow, that's great. So he was like, uh, he was saying like, okay, these six are good, and then can you write like more songs? And of course I can write more songs. I mean, <laughs> it's like, so I, at the end of the day, then we got 10 songs, and I sent sent them to Jörn, and he was like, he liked the songs, and it's a bit different because. Uh, they wanted to have a little bit of change. Right. So uh, that's why they called me. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Well, I definitely thank you for this chat. It's a, it's an honor to talk to you. Um, would you like to say anything in the ending? Or just live happy and prosper. You know, that's it. <laughs> cool. Be happy. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Have, have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.